Our gospel reading is John chapter 1 with a selection of verses. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but he confessed freely, I'm not the Messiah. They asked him, well then who are you? Are you Elijah? And he said, I'm not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally they said, well, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? So John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I'm the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who'd been sent questioned him, hmm, why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, said John, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of Christ. Father, as we hear your word, we pray that you would heal our hearts. Do your work, we ask you, God. Amen. Before I forget, if you have been given a decoration for the tree, feel free to hang it whenever you are ready. Just don't take it home. Ian, Diana, welcome home. I ran the Santa Dash on Friday. I had prepared for that race. In fact, I had studied ways that I could increase my speed and beat the world. If I held my arms at right angles, the driving motion would increase my speed. If I were to plant my feet center, then there would be less pressure on my knees, increasing my cadence. If I lifted my head up and looked straight rather than down, which is what I normally do, in a longer run, then I have less drag. If I breathe twice out and twice in every second step, then I will have increased stamina by the end. None of that accounted for the 16-year-olds that were running <laughs> ahead of me. I heard at the beginning of the race a 13-year-old say this to his father in response to his dad's statement. And this is what dad said. Now don't forget, think about what you're going to do with the prize money. Focus on that and run as fast as you can. 
To which the son replied, Dad, I can do it in five minutes. I was hopeful that he was just exaggerating because my fastest was seven, which meant I was two minutes too slow. So the challenge to start happened and I methodically said that I'm going to run behind the lead and then I'm going to pounce at a thousand meters because I had been practicing my 600 meter sprint. So I looked great for the first 20 meters. The distance between me and the lead increased. My breathing went out the window. My right angle became more like 45 degrees. I was now running on my toes. I had lost all configuration of an ideal runner. In fact, when I got to the thousand meter mark, I swore I saw Jesus coming for me. I said, Jesus, is that you? To which I'm sure it was just what we call a runner's wall. That's where you wonder what the heck you were doing. I wanted to walk but I had too much pride, so I kept running. I think I came fifth, but if you do the maths and add up everyone who beat me, it equates to less than my age. <laughs> the joy of the Lord. We heard in Advent 1 about hope and brokenness. We heard in Advent 2 about peace, but we cannot have peace without faith. Today we talk about joy. In our gospel this morning, we hear a similar story to what we heard in our gospel last week. So I want to focus on what Christine read to us from Isaiah. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. The poor meaning the poor in spirit. How do we obtain the joy of the Lord? Well, unlike my center dash, there is nothing that we need to do to inherit the joy of the Lord. Why? Because when we come to know God, the promise of Isaiah's prophetic in chapter 61 simply says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon you. Therefore, everything that comes from him is yours. So the joy of the Lord is for hours to lose, not for hours to gain. I wondered about how do I describe what the joy of the Lord is? And I never like to repeat stories, but this story is one that you've heard before. However, it highlights for me, for my heart, what the joy of the Lord is. Sandra was the name of my first wife. We are not alone in this hospital room. It is full of family. We are aware that she may die. But I think it's fair to say we are never quite sure. My mother summons me and says these words, you need to tell Sandra that you love her. And then you need to say, 
it's okay to go. Of course, in case you don't remember, I began the chronological story from the first date where I reminded her, and at this stage she's on life support and she's requiring oxygen just to breathe. She is in a panic state and she's anxious and she is very uncomfortable. I place my arm around her waist on the bed. This time she's sitting up. It's the only way she can fight for some sense of the ability to breathe. I whisper in her ears and it's like being on a private date with her. Do you remember when we went on our first date and you put your hand in my back pocket and just some background to that, I was never that forward. No one ever puts their hand in your back pocket. And I said, I remember that moment, but I love you. And do you remember this time? And do you remember this moment? And do you remember these things? And do you remember these people? And each statement would be followed up by the words, but I love you. Of course, I remember clearly it was six o'clock and I had finished the story of our life. Then I said the words that I was instructed to say by my mother, but never understood. But now, I release you. You go when you're ready. I want to remind you that by the time we got to that point, she no longer required oxygen. The anxiety had gone. She was perfectly calm. She had laid her head on my shoulder. The room was dead silent. No one else could hear me but Sandra. And then she went home to God. What is joy? Joy is knowing in the midst of anything, no matter what it is for you, that there is God. Joy is not an outward characteristic that makes you jump for joy. It's not a, an emotional state that perhaps I would have displayed had I won the center dash. It's simply this. It's a knowledge that whatever is happening for us. That God was there. That God is there. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon you. That's where our joy comes from. For he has anointed me, he says. And this is Isaiah talking about the king who was about to come, the messianic king. He was preparing us for who was to come. And in fact, later in Jesus' ministry, when he is here on earth, and you remember he was here for 33 years, one year more than Denise and Doug have been in New Zealand. Jesus stands in the temple and he says these words, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor in spirit. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, 
But here's the difference between Jesus saying it and Isaiah. And that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He was the prophetic preference of what Isaiah was talking about. The time of the Lord's favor has come. When the sovereign spirit of the Lord is upon us, we inherit the joy that is ours. And therefore, God's favor upon us. What is it for you this morning that may be trying to take your joy away? The favor of the Lord has come. And the favor of the Lord is ours. All we have to do is to remember this, that last week we talked about faith. Remember what David said, Lord, you are saying in my heart, come talk to me. And my heart says, Lord, I am coming. Come before God. I remind you, that's what we discussed last Sunday. Tell him what's happening to you. But I want to tell you the next step. And we find it in the continuation of Isaiah 61. And I end with those words. The joy of the Lord is yours because the spirit of the sovereign God is upon you. And because of it, he gave you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for your spirit of heaviness, that we might be trees, or in the King James, we would be oak trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. This was Isaiah referring to the Israelites and for three chapters before 61 he talks about the, the unrighteousness of the people of Israel. But now he's prophesying saying that there is someone that is coming and he will make us righteous. In righteousness we know the joy of the Lord. So when you pray and you pray for that leg, or you pray for that hip, or you pray for your family, or you pray for a centre dash, whatever it may be, I want you to add these words. Father, you gave me beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for heaviness, so that I might be a tree of righteousness. Proclaim God's word in your prayer. Claim what is yours and mine, the joy of the Lord. There are no 90 degree angles that are needed. There are no foot planting required. There are no deep breathing. It is yours. Claim it. Claim it by God's word. This morning, after each prayer, I will say, Kororia kite tua, and you will respond, Hear our prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Help us to pray simply and sincerely, unselfishly and gratefully, remembering the needs of others as well as our own, 
and giving thanks always for all things in the name of Christ our Lord. Grant that all who come into our church may be enabled to renew their relationship with you and may find your peace, your strength, your grace and above all your presence. Help us as a congregation to be outward looking so that what we find within our fellowship we may share with those outside for the benefit of all and for your glory of your greater glory. Karoria kiti atua. We pray for every leaders in our churches around the world and our own ministry, Brendan, David, Dillian and Liam. Give them your wisdom and discernment as they lead. We pray that their hearts would be directed first to you, that you would recognise where their true help and strength come from. We ask that you would be their refuge and their peace. We pray that you would surround each one with wise counsel and that their faith in you would be unwavering. We pray for their families. Give them strength, protection and grace for the days ahead. Kororia ki te atua. Guide with wisdom and power the leaders of the nations so that everyone may live in peace and mutual trust, sharing with justice the resources of the earth. Give people of this land a spirit of unselfishness, <coughs> compassion and fairness in public and private life. We pray for those who are less fortunate than ourselves, those in countries where there is very little stability and in countries where there is drought and famine and COVID-19 virus. Teach us to be mindful of those who are weary with a relentless struggle to keep alive, for those who can never look forward to a good meal and comfortable bed, and those who barely have the necessities of life. Karoria kite atua. We pray for people who are frightened because they are ill. Help them to have confidence in those with medical knowledge to diagnose illness and care for the sick. Give them courage, hope and peace and the knowledge that you are present in their weakness, pain and suffering. We especially offer prayers for members of our own congregation, the Reverend Peter Phillips, the Reverend Arthur Mead, Ken Clark, and Margaret Williamson. Karoria Kite Atua. Heavenly Father, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them. Christ Jesus is the light of the world a light no darkness can quench. We remember before God those who have died and light a candle to symbolise the light of Christ which eternally shines and brings hope. Karoria kite atua. Father, we pray that as we come before your table today, that our communion is not mere routine, but a precious time of fellowship with Jesus Christ as we thankfully remember his redeeming love and meet with him as our living Lord. May we come to your table with joyful and expectant hearts and go out afterwards nourished and strengthened in spirit to serve you in the world to the glory of your name. Karoria kite atua. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son and our Saviour, 
Jesus Christ. Amen.